Um, I often get the question coming from students and parents alike um, that what score should we aim for? Um, or this is a score I've got, is that good enough? Well, um, the answer to that question would be um, the highest score you can get. You need to prepare so well for the UCAP that you get really high scores. Um, and I'll show you the breakdown later on. But in my opinion, scores you should be aiming for should be around 2,800 and higher. That's not to say students who get less than 2,800 are, um, you know, they can't apply to medical school or dental school. Of course they can. But know that the chances of success kind of diminishes the lower your score is. And that's why um, I want you to aim for scores of around 2,800 and higher. Um, but it's not the end of the world if your score is a bit lower than that. Um, data shows, you know, if you do the data analysis, it shows that actually people who um, get scores of 50% decile and higher. So who, those people, they're, they're in the six, you know, six decile and higher, i.e. Uh, in the top 50% of the marks overall in the UK, they tend to have uh, successful outcomes uh, in terms of interview uh, offers and then later um, success at interview as well. So um, there's very strong evidence to suggest that you do better at interview and um, better chances of getting into uh, university as a result of the higher score. Um, so historically that 50% cutoff has been round about the 2600 mark but I think if you take my sincere uh, view on this is that don't aim for 2600 that's merely that cutoff point that average and I know this year and so this is 2022 um, some students have had interview rejections when they've had scores close to 2600 so um, in difficult years like at the moment um, when universities raise that cutoff threshold uh, for various reasons um, you might miss out um, and that's why the safer uh, score would be 2,800 and above. So there's something to be said about the situational judgment as well, the situational judgment section. Now, people say to me, uh, you know, well, look, what score do I need to get? Is it counted? Is it even relevant? Is there any point? Um, so number one, situational judgment, of course it's relevant. Um, there's a very strong correlation between people who do well at situational judgment and those people who then go on and do well at interview uh, because it's just the nature of your thinking is very much aligned to how successful you are at interview process. So it definitely contributes to doing well in interviews. But also there is good evidence that really people who end up neglecting situational judgment and get like band fours and band threes, their chances of getting to interview is sometimes nil. Um, be very careful. Some universities expressly set the uh, condition that you have to have situational judgment above, above band three and not below. Um, so band four would get you a straight rejection. So be very careful um, if you play that card. Um, I would give it the same um, gravity as I would with any other sections of UCAT and frankly try and get band one or band two um, and, and, and get uh, get to interview stage. The last, po la last point I want to raise is um, students ask me, uh, I've had this a few times, that look, um, it's okay, um, I've messed up my UCAT, I'll just sit in the BMAT and I'll do better in the BMAT and perhaps um, maybe I'll apply to other BMAT universities or change my views on where I apply and so forth. Um, just be wary about that strategy because I think that's a flawed strategy. Um, I think, again, if you look at evidence, it shows that people who do the, both tests, if they do well at UCAT, they then actually go and do well at BMAT. So those both tend to reflect each other. People who do poorly at UCAT then go and get poor scores at BMAT. Um, that's just the evidence. That's just how it is. I'm sure there's anomalies whereby somebody who's not done well at UCAT then does well at BMAT and vice versa. Um, but the correlation is, on average, that if you do badly in your UCAT, you'll do badly in your BMAT. So, um, my view, prepare really well in your UCAT. Just a point to note, if certain sections of UCAT, so for example, situational judgment, uh, decision making, 
those kind of questions I feel are important and they'll set you well, especially for section one of BMAT. So bear that in mind. So one tends to complement the other. Um, so there you go.